Hey everyone, Giselle here, and welcome to my Smetathon reading vlog for the week. Um, it is actually Sunday, the day before the readathon starts, but I've actually already started reading my Smetathon books because honestly, readathons are just about reading more, and if I feel like starting the books now, I'm gonna start them now. So that's pretty much what I've done, so I guess I'm cheating a bit. So there are seven prompts if you don't know, and I'll go over my TBR right now. I have multiple books set for each prompt. Um, in case I end up like not liking one, I can try to read a different one instead. So the seven prompts are Enemies to Lovers. For that one, I chose North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, that one is not actually smutty at all, but it is a romance book and I really wanted to read it before the end of the year, so it's perfectly fitting in. Uh, Friends with Benefits, I chose Hero by um, Samantha Young. I actually didn't write the authors down. Whoops, my bad. Hero by Samantha Young. For Fake Relationship, I chose, I'm still not 100% sure which one I'm gonna go with, either Cotillion by Georgette Heyer, Hare, or The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Zapata. Uh, for Slow Burn, um, I'm hoping that Somewhere I'll Find You is Slow Burn, but if it's not, I may also just go with um, Emma by Jane Austen. Somewhere I'll Find You, I'm pretty sure, is by Lisa Claypass. And then Forbidden Romance, um, I chose More Than a Mistress by Mary Batlog. Uh, Different Worlds, I decided to go with Mine Until Midnight, which I don't remember how that fits into Different Worlds. If it doesn't, maybe I just put it there by accident. If it doesn't, that one's also by Lisa Claypass. I may just go with the um, <laughs> other Miss Bridgerton because he's like a privateer, I believe, and she's gentry and he might be gentry as well but he's like a privateer and that's by julia quinn and then the last prompt is one night stand um and for that i chose rock addiction i'm trying to remember who that one's by as well i don't remember um it'll be on the screen i'm pretty sure that's by the same person that uh, wrote the side changeling series anyway so those are the prompts those are the books i'm hoping to read this week so far i have read um, about one hour of North and South, and I've listened to about three hours of More Than a Mistress. So we'll see how the week goes. So I am going to be doing bullet journal stuff this time around. Um, I have like lists of stuff that I may cross off. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do that. But I also, if you guys know how, so the way I do my plan, my reading, quick refresh if you've never watched any of my videos before. Um, I do a lot of reading planning because I find it very soothing. I'll listen to an audiobook and just sit down and plan my reading for the week. I usually do this, um, most Sunday nights. And, uh, the way that I do it is that this one, it has ten rows and then it has seven columns, one for each day of the week. And then it has the ten rows. But it, for readathons, I normally listen to ten hours in a day, especially on the weekends when I don't have to work. I'll usually get upwards of, like... I don't know, 16, sometimes even 20 hours <laughs> of audiobook listening in, especially if they're romance books. I go through them so quickly. And so I ended up doing something which I think is really smart and I'm very happy with myself about. They're basically just, I think they're called French flaps. And so I fold them down and then it has the rest of the stuff that I want to listen to for the day on there. Is that not so great? I did this tonight. I basically just ended up cutting out columns from previous sections, so ones that were empty. So like in this week, I didn't end up using my Friday, so I just cut it out. <laughs> and yeah, it's pretty gosh darn great. I've already kind of changed my TBR though because I started a book that I was planning on reading for Smetathon and then I didn't like it. Um, about 40 minutes in, I DNF'd and so I completely crossed that book off and had to add a new book in. So this has already changed. I'm going to rewrite this uh, fresh tonight for tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how I'm planning. And then I also do have uh, my bullet journal this time around again as well. So last time from Newt, uh, I'm sure you guys will probably remember if you splotched those, but I basically had like the numbers of the days across and then I would write out the book and fill them in. I'm going to do it very similarly, except for I don't really like those markers. There's not... I don't know. Some of the colors I didn't think had a, like a wide enough color range. And since it's only a week long and not a whole month, I don't have to use as many colors if that makes sense as well because I didn't want to get confused and just start fresh every week because some books, maybe I started it on a Monday and then put it down for a whole week and then picked it back up on a Monday. I didn't want like the same color crossover because like 
you wouldn't know. So I'm doing it with colored pencils this time. So I have seven colored pencils um, here that are each color of the rainbow. So I have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And, or very close to indigo and violet. And um, I think it looks super pretty. So this is what it looks like. And I drew the rainbow across the top. And then I have the first two books that I've started and I will color them in as the week goes along. I did start on the 9th because today's the 9th. The readathon officially starts tomorrow but I do what I want uh, because the point is to read and I wanted to start these books. I'm just super in the mood for them. So yeah that's basically my reading plan. So tonight it is now already 10 p.m. Um, and I am actually going to do a live stream talking about my readathon like my reading plans for the readathon and catching up in general. So I'm going to do that tonight. So I'm not going to read anything else for the evening. So I will mark off my what I have done in my bullet journal. And then tomorrow we can go gung ho into the readathon. But I think I'll feel I think I think I'll feel a little bit better having like those extra few hours taken off for the week so I can like not like stress about it because honestly <laughs> the next week the rest of the month pretty much is going to be super hectic at work. I mean, I don't listen to books at work and I can't read during work either. But it might just kill my brain though because it's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot happening because I work retail and it's Christmas time. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I also have a beautiful new journal that a friend of mine gifted me with a unicorn on the front. I need to take this sticker off because no stickers on our journals and books, please. Much better. Okay, so this cute little unicorn and she also got me, she's such a sweetheart. These are like an early Christmas present. They are my Christmas present, but I opened them early. It also has this, it has these like little unicorns in it that like, float up and down the pen and I had a pen very similar to this um from SeaWorld from SeaWorld oh my gosh from Splash Mountain slightly different from Splash Mountain at Disneyland I had the little family and it, like going down the mountain the drop it was wonderful but that pen has long since been destroyed I think it I think we like left it in the garage and it like melted and so the characters wouldn't move anymore. Anyway, so I'm very excited so I think I'm going to write lists in this as well. I do like writing like crummy messy lists in this like the whole thing is just full of like my random scribblings and this is like my very much like this is not pretty <laughs> journal full of like cross outs and stuff like that. But I think I might start doing like pretty lists in this because it's so pretty. Plus I can rip them out so if I don't like the page I can dispose of it. So anyway, those are the plans. I've already been talking for a long time. Let's start the readathon and start reading and hopefully I get a lot of reading done. Um, a quick update. I did talk about it in my last new vlog that went up but if you haven't watched that I did explain that I have not read any books except for this past weekend. I've not read any books since um, mid-October is the last time I touched a book. I just, that's a little dramatic. I work <laughs> in a bookstore, so I've definitely touched books. Last time I read a book, though, was mid-October, so it's been about two months, and I just really just, I don't know, I just needed time when I wasn't reading books. It was making me feel stressed out, so I took a break, but I'm hoping to get gung-ho back in and maybe pound out, like, maybe 30 more books in the rest of the month would be ideal. I don't know if that can happen, but that would get me to around 340 books for the year, which would be awesome. So anyway, those are the goals. And let's read some smutty books. <laughs> update mine till midnight is totally different worlds because she is not part of the aristocracy is that how you say that but then she gets a fortune and now all of a sudden she is part of the that social class and she has to like figure out how to deal with that so it totally counts from different for different worlds perfect <laughs>
Okay, so there's lots of laundry to do. Hello, welcome to Monday. It's the very first day of the week. I should know that. First day of the readathon officially. I am two hours into North and South, which, oh my gosh, ugh, this, com this new camera, wow, good job. This new camera really likes to not focus. Okay, there we go. North and South. I'm two hours in. I'm really enjoying it so far. I listened to about an hour this morning-ish. Um, I didn't go to bed last night until like like 2 a.m. or something. So I'm running on not a lot of sleep because um, <laughs> I went to work this morning. So it's now actually 7.40 p.m. It's kind of late now. Uh, we got home probably around 6. Christopher looked over something in my vlog that I'm editing right now and said that he doesn't really like how it's edited so he's going to fix it because um, I agreed and I was like, I don't think I did this very well. So he's going to do that for me and I made dinner while he did that and then we um, ate and then he ended up leaving around seven close to seven uh to go to the movie theaters uh to go see green book again he's already seen it and he really loved it so he's gonna see it again and i stayed home so what i really need to do tonight i mean there's no way i'm getting to 10 hours tonight on audiobooks like not a freaking chance in heck but i'm gonna try to edit the rest of my vlog as far as i can and then christopher's gonna go through it and like clean it up for me which will be easier for him once it, once I've edited most of it um and then just like clean it up and then we can get that posted hopefully tomorrow or maybe the next day so anyway um that's my plans for the night I really don't plan on reading much at all tonight like I would like to but I just don't think I have the time I'm feeling really tired kind of exhausted work has just been so busy and I just feel so tired when I get home and I really need to fold the laundry, like, really badly. Yesterday, Christopher did, um, like, three loads, and that's what this is. And we don't really have any place to put them when they're not folded and hung up and stuff. Like, we don't have, like, a like a ton of laundry baskets that we can just, like, let them sit in or whatever. And we don't want to throw them on the floor, obviously. So, like, they're on the bed right now, and I really need to get to them. We had them, like, basically stacked, like really high like probably up to like my waist high in this one basket and it was like toppling over so anyway this needs to happen video needs to get edited clothes need to get put away at least partially and I need to go to bed those are the goals for tonight I would love to get like maybe an extra hour read tonight of my audiobooks but besides that no and also I realized normally I have the same schedule every week and I have for like over a year at this point like my schedule never changes but I actually had to take this Saturday off because Christopher and I are doing something we are actually going to go see the Nutcracker this weekend um and we're going to see it Saturday night and we're probably going to spend a few hours before that in Boston as well and go eat and stuff like that uh, we're going to go into the city so I really don't anticipate to get very much done on Saturday reading wise at all maybe a little bit in the morning and then Friday I'm working instead so I'm really not going to have that much time to read on Friday or Saturday, I realized. So there goes one of my big reading days. So we'll see how this week ends up panning out. But for now, I've only read one hour so far. So that's a uh, less than ideal. <laughs> okay, so it's now Tuesday. Technically day two of the readathon. I didn't read anything last night. I did vlog. I vlog. <laughs> I did edit my vlog. I edited it for a while and then my brother called me and so we ended up talking for a while and then Chris came home and then I was really tired and I came to bed. So nothing got done at all. I did mostly edit the vlog but I still have like maybe 10 more minutes of editing left and I definitely didn't fold any of the laundry. <laughs> it's all still in the middle of the bed. We keep like throwing it off in a basket, but it needs to get folded. So I'm going to try to power through and do that right now. I'm pretty tired. It's now 7 p.m. And I just ate dinner. I'm not really totally full though, so I think I'm going to have a little bit of a snack. Uh, being and consisting of um, these little like pretzel nuggets. I really really like these a lot so that will be delicious. I just picked them up from the store and I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna fold and hang and finish all this as much as I can at least and then I'm gonna try to power through and take a shower tonight otherwise I have to take one in the morning so I'd rather take one tonight and then I can go to bed so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna start I'm gonna keep listening to books obviously. Um, 
I didn't read anything else last night, so I am now uh, two and a half hours into North and South, and that's literally all that's happened. Oh, this, this new camera is not the best for my reading vlogs. <laughs> Come on. Oh, there we go. So I'm now two and a half hours into this, which, considering it's like an 18 and a half hour book, is <laughs> not great. Maybe I shouldn't have picked a long book for a readathon, but what you gonna do? So I'm gonna uh, probably not listen to any more North and South right now. I'm probably gonna try to get through one of my like other like romance books to try to make it feel like I'm actually maybe accomplishing something and stretch this one out over the whole week pretty much. So that's the plan. Hopefully I don't utterly fail like I did yesterday. Okay, so it is now uh, 8.30 and I don't know, I'm four hours and 15 minutes into the, uh, gosh, what is it called? More Than a Mistress by Mary Balog. And it's not horrible, like it's not, nothing like inherently wrong with it, I suppose, but it's boring as frick. I don't care about it. I think the characters are acting really stupidly and are unengaging and I'm just really not liking my experience reading it whatsoever. So I think I'm going to DNF it. I don't know. I just don't feel like I have time to read books that are not enjoyable and it's not enjoyable. I don't know. Also, he's like, trying to pressure her into doing things that she doesn't want to do like not sexually but just like in other ways because she's a servant of his and I mean we're this far in and I think they've kissed once like nothing's really happened but like he keeps like trying to pressure her into doing things and like even when she says no he's like well too bad you're gonna do it anyway and it's like she technically I guess if she would keep her firm resolve, she could go away and, like, stop it, but she doesn't. She just, like, as soon as he'll, like, say no to her once or twice, and she's just like, okay. And it's really, I don't know, just bothering me. I wish she'd just grow a spine and also not be so dumb, because the way she's going about stuff now, she's literally gonna get herself killed for murder. I kill, yeah, hung for murder. So, anyway, I just... She's just, I don't know, I just am not liking it. As you can tell, I'm very tired, and it's not even, um, nine yet. Anyway, so I think I'm going to DNF that and move on to something hopefully better. This is not going well. Okay, this is garbage. Um, Somewhere I'll Find You by Lisa Claypiss. It's probably going to go away, dang it. Okay, there we go. There it is. I am, uh, not even ten minutes in, and our main hero has already assaulted her, so I'm gonna, uh, put this one down as well. What garbage is this? This is so dumb. Ugh. Like, literally, she gives him no sort of invitation or anything, and he even, like, says that he can, like, sense that she's, like, about to, like, walk away from him. He's literally so insta in love with lust with her that he, like, follows her outside, like, comes up real close to her, and he's like, so where are you from? And she's like, mm, yeah, I'm not gonna tell you that. And he's like, she's like, why did you come outside? And he's like, to, fall, to like, talk to you. And so she, like, acts like she's about to walk away because she's not interested. And then he just grabs her by the head, says, let me, and then kisses her. And then she pulls away from him. And he's like, no, please don't go. And then she's just like, bye. Ooh, I don't want to see their relationship because that's really not okay and creepy. So, um... On to the next, and hopefully I get something better. What's going on? Ugh. at night 
obviously. <laughs> uh, so it's almost midnight, and as you can see, I am now four and a half hours through uh, fight or flight. Focus on me, please. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm four and a half hours in, and like, this is what I was missing with more than a mistress. Like, the intrigue and desire enough to keep on reading. Like, obviously I'm not going to enjoy reading if I'm reading mediocre books. And I feel like that's what I was missing before in like October when I was trying to read and I just like was not feeling it. I wasn't in the mood and I was just like, I don't know. It felt like a chore and it wasn't fun anymore. And even just reading More Than a Mistress, it wasn't fun. It was like a slog to read. And I turned it up to like 2.5 to try to get through it faster. And I'm like, why am I forcing myself through this like agony when I'm not enjoying it whatsoever? So that's not my problem that I'm having with this one. I'm actually really enjoying it. Um, I'm very engaged and... Yeah, it, I'm having fun so far, so I'll probably finish it up tomorrow. I would have loved to finish it tonight, but considering that I started it at like 9.30, that wasn't going to happen. So that's my update for the night. I'm not going to read any more tonight, really. I'm just going to go to bed because I'm tired and I have to work in the morning, per usual. And hopefully I'll be able to get a lot of reading done tomorrow night. I'll finish like one or two things tomorrow night would be like amazing so anyway that's my my reading update for the day uh, i'm not doing very well so far but i'm gonna try to make it up on the weekend even though i'm not gonna really have a day off except for sunday so hopefully sunday i can knock out like two or three books let's see see you tomorrow there you are darling patrice's voice carried across the room we both turned to watch her and dandy walking toward us she wore a long figure hugging glass beaded dress her arm was looped through dandy's michael dandy senior was the same height as his wife with a trim athletic build and a handsome boyish face that never seemed to change as the years passed his dark eyes were always lit with good humor and kindness caleb and i stood at their approach and were immediately engulfed in patrice's extensive perfume as she kissed our cheeks in turn i realized what a wasted opportunity it was not to have the christmas tree behind me when i'm vlogging during december like what a waste here it is it's so beautiful anyway um i got back from work about an hour ago it is day three of the readathon now it's wednesday it's really cold in here um yeah we turned the heat on but it's just like <laughs> so cold now uh anyway um so it's like 7 p.m now like i said i got back about an hour ago but chris was just like feeling like not great when he got home so um we just ended up going and like laying to bed together in bed for a while till he fell asleep and then I came back out because I'm not ready to go to sleep. I need to read for the readathon. So I'm actually really happy with my progress. I listened on my lunch break and I list listened before work and a little bit after work and I'm now eight and a half hours through Fight or Flight and I'm actually really enjoying it so far. I feel like and maybe just because everything I've read by Samantha Young so far has either been part of the On Dublin Street series or has been part of the mm, that other one <laughs> the other one that's like connected the Hearts Boardwalk series everything I've read by her has been part of those two series and this is like the first thing that I'm reading that isn't part of those two series and those two series are connected in like a novella at the end so it's like they sort of feel together anyway um I really like it a lot actually so far um I'm so enjoying it. I don't know. A friend said that she didn't have, like, the most positive feeling towards it, um, who just read it, uh, one of my in-person friends from work, and I was like, oh, really? <laughs> and then I started it that night, and I'm super enjoying it, so <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to talk about it after and see what she didn't love, but this is, I think, gonna be my favorite Samantha Young book. I really like the third book in the heart uh, on the on Dublin Treat series as well so I may go and reread that one next year and like compare them to which one I might like more but as of right now I think this one might be winning I really do like it I don't know I just feel like with a lot of new adult and with um Samantha Young in particular I feel like she feels like everybody has to have the most like heartbreaking and depressing and traumatic backstory and this person does have a really heartbreaking and sad backstory but compared to what a lot of her other characters have suffered it doesn't seem like that bad so I'm appreciating a little bit more of like a light-hearted thing that like yeah this person like everyone has baggage and her baggage is like 
pretty crappy, but it's also like, unfortunately not that uncommon, so yeah, and it could have been worse, so I don't know, uh, and in the end, it like worked out for the best, which I think is the best part about her backstory without like giving it away, is that even though it wasn't like the best at the time, it was like better in the long run, which is good. So anyway, I'm enjoying it a lot. I really didn't like um, Caleb at the beginning because he is kind of like an a-hole, but he's grown on me and I do like him much better now. So that's my thoughts. I'm going to finish this up. I have three hours left and I'm listening on 2.25 speed right now, although I've been fluctuating between like 2 and 2.5. Like I've been just slowing it down if I felt like I was like missing stuff and speeding it up when I felt like I was fine. Um, so I've been fluctuating a lot, but that's my update for now. Um, I'll finish this tonight and then, um, hopefully start another one. And, um, my TBR may be changing a bit more as well because that f aforementioned friend and I, um, while she's back from college, we were thinking of doing some buddy reads. So she wants to reread some Colleen Hoover and I'm like, I'll read some Colleen Hoover for contemporary of them let's do it. So I'll have to go see what books I own because she doesn't have any of her Colleen Hoover with her. It's all in college. And so I'm going to have to like go through, dig through, see what Colleen Hoover I have. And then I'll bring some to her tomorrow and we'll decide what we want to read. And I'll just grab whatever on Audible to read with her. So that's my plans for the night is to read this, finish this, and then maybe start um, maybe my Nora Roberts. I don't know. I'll have to figure out what I want to do and I would, should continue on with North and South as well otherwise it's going to be something that I'm not going to get finished this week which would be really sad. And I'm back and it is now um 8 50 and I just finished a Fight or Flight. Let me go. There we are. Fight or Flight by Samantha Young. I don't know. Honestly the end let me down a bit. So it's not my favorite Samantha Young. I, I'd give it three stars. I did really enjoy it. But I got very frustrated with Caleb at the end. Like, I did like him more and more as it went along. And then at the end, I was just like, okay, now. So, I don't know. Overall, I liked it. I'm glad I read it. And I'm glad, glad I've read another one of her books. I can cross it off my list. Um, but it wasn't my total favorite. But I did enjoy it. And overall, I do like most of the books that I've read by her. There's only been a few that I've like really disliked. So yeah, those are my thoughts. And now I need to decide what to read next. I'm not sure yet. I think I need to check what I even put on my list for this week because I had so many options that I'm not 100% sure like what I like really narrowed down. So let me go look at that and see if there's anything good. It is now 11.15 at night and I started listening to The Hating Game again. Oh my gosh. I just, I don't know. Whenever it's like time to read romance books and I don't know what to read, this is like my go-to and I don't know. Um, I did try to start, oh gosh, Nalini Singh, her contemporary book. What is it? It's one of the, her like rock rock addiction I think is what it is the first one in that rock series and I, I started it and I don't know it's like all poetic at the beginning and stuff which is just like not my style and then I don't know I just didn't like the dynamic between the heroine and the hero and I don't know I just like wasn't in the mood maybe I'll try it again in the future but I feel like I'm going to start with her Psy Changeling series instead because I feel like I'll like that more so I like tried it, I listened to maybe the first 20-30 minutes and I just wasn't in the mood. And I also started Hero by Samantha Young as well. I listened to maybe the first 10 minutes and again I just didn't love the dynamic. So I was like, well what do I listen to then? <laughs> the hating game apparently. So this, if any of you are unaware, this is like my fifth time reading it this year. <laughs> <laughs> but why not so I'm oh gosh how far am I am through I, I'm three hours through ish give or take 
I'm three and a half hours through, um, and that's what I've been listening to. I also did something really exciting today. Um, I This year, I didn't end up using a spreadsheet to track my reading like I have done the past three years. I was going to, but something needed to be tweaked on the spreadsheet, and it never ended up getting tweaked, so I just never ended up using it, um, which is really unfortunate, and I really wish I had, but by the time I was behind, it was just too overwhelming. Like, there's not a friggin' chance in heck that I was gonna enter in all those stats for the 315 books that I've read so far this year. Like, that's not gonna happen. Because I did, I would do, like, title, author, if it's part of a series, what number it is in the series, um, narrator, page, uh, page number, like, page count, audio, like, hours listened, um, and there were, like, a ton of other things as well, like, star rating, obviously, and it was just, like, really kind of overwhelming to have to enter it all in by hand, like, once you're already, like, 100 or 200 or 300 books into the year, so I just decided not to do it, but I did want some sort of stats for how my reading was going to go, or how my reading had gone, and so I ended up, just so I can compare it and see how I did compared to last year and see what I'll do compared to next year, so I did end up going through my Goodreads, but instead of doing title, author, and all those other things, I literally just did genre, age, so genre, by category, age, by like adult, young adult, middle grade, and ch children's kids. Um, star rating, just one, two, three, four, five. I didn't end up doing like point fives and stuff, although I could have because it was just like too nuanced for me at that at right now. Um, 300 and something books in, and I ended up doing whether I completed the book or whether it was a DNF. So I just did that with the 300 books that I've read so far this year. And I'm glad I have those stats. Um, I'm glad that I DNF'd as much as I did. I'm glad that um, I read as many five-star books as I did because there was a ton of them and I read so many four-stars as well. And most of my one-stars were the DNFs and a couple of my two-stars, but um, most of my one-stars were DNFs, which makes me really happy because it means I didn't spend too many one-stars reading books that I hate it all the way through, which I still did some of, but not as much as I have in the past. And I'm like really happy with how the stats look overall. Um, I read so much contemporary this year. I've never read that much contemporary, anywhere close to that much contemporary before. And this con this year, contemporary was my second highest category. Um, I realized that I don't read nearly enough nonfiction. Um, I think I only read 20 nonfiction, which is pitiful um considering how often it's a five star read for me as well like I love nonfiction when I read it why am I not reading it more so it's like interesting to see that and go like well going through all the nonfiction books that I read I loved most of them um most of them were four or five star books I think maybe all of them were maybe barring one or two like why am I not reading more of those when I read contemporary or fantasy or what have you, it is so high of like whether I'm one star or five star or whatever, it's all over the place. And I did, I've had a hard time deciding where to put like kids books, um, like picture books as far as like that genre thing did since I was separating age by genre. I wasn't sure where to put those in genre sometimes, so a lot of them I just ended up chucking in fantasy, and then some of them I put in contemporary, just depending, but a lot of them went in fantasy, which did boost my fantasy rating, but then at the same time I did track fantasy versus urban fantasy separately because I read a lot more urban fantasy this year than I feel like I have in the past, and I really like urban fantasy now, and I've been reading so much more of it. And together, that stat is, like, I read, like, over 100 
and I think 15 or 20 of those and then contemporary is still like 90 so I did like read a lot more fantasy but I read so much contemporary and I only ended up reading like 50 historical fictions which is so much less than it was like in 2016 I read so many more historical fiction so I don't know it's just like really interesting to see how they I'll go. The one thing I didn't do that I would like to go, well two things I didn't do that I'd like to go track, is I would like to go through, see out of all my five star reads, how many of them were rereads. I didn't check rereads, but I feel like that will be an easy thing to go through. Um, I, I would like to check what I've reread. Um, so like what were new to me favorites, like what books did I read this year that are now like all time favorites for me and I will want to reread forever. Um, that's pretty much what a five star book for me is, is that I love it and I want to reread it forever and a day. That is a five star book for me. And if it doesn't meet that, it's not a five star for me. Um, so what are all time favorites that I've discovered this year? What books did I reread and how many? Because I know I reread well over probably 25 I think over half of my st five star <laughs> reads for this year were rereads um and I also would like to check how many fairy tales I read I didn't want to split it differently than I did in the past um I used to track it as its own genre but this time I just decided to lump them in with whatever they were and I'd like to just go through find all the fairy tale retellings and set that number and have like a number at like out of the 300 and whatever books I read this year 45 were fantasy fairy tale retellings or something like that I don't know if it's that high of a number but I'm sure it's a fairly high number because I love my fairy tale retellings and that's something I feel like I've also neglected <laughs> welcome to Giselle's reflections on 2018 um in the middle for contemporary a thon vlog but I just feel like I've really neglected that part of my reading this year reading my fairy tale retellings if you didn't know those bookcases over there, these two, um, that, that top shelf, that shelf, that shelf, that shelf, and then, oh my gosh, that shelf and that shelf are all fairy tale retellings. That was really hard to do, mirrored. Um, but those are all fairy tale retellings. Like, I collect them, I hoard them, I separate them separately, and I love them. And I just didn't read enough this year. I definitely need to focus on reading some more. And I guess a correction would be to say that they're not all technically fairy tale retellings, but they're either all fairy tale retellings or by authors who write fairy tale retellings. Because I don't want to like split authors between rooms because that seems just really awkward. So like not everything Gail Carson Levine writes it's a fairy tale retelling, but everything I own by her are with her fairy tale retelling. And same thing with Shannon Hale. Like the first book in the Books of Bayern series is a fairy tale retelling, and the rest aren't. Obviously, I'm not going to split up a series. And same thing with like Gregory Maguire. He's written a few fairy tale retellings, and if but everything he writes are retellings. So I just lumped it in there as well. So I like to see that. And yeah, I've done a pretty good year job throughout the whole year though tracking. Um, my sequels that I've read, how many new series I've started, and all that. I'm pretty up to date on it. Maybe, maybe like a dozen books behind, which is not very much considering how many I read that I need to implement into that. And I really liked how I tracked that. I tracked it on Goodreads this year, um, just um, in a group. And I really, I tracked it in a group and then you can just like make a post in any like group discussion and edit it so I did it specifically for my group um and edited it every few months or whatever to keep track of it and I liked how I did that I, I definitely failed at my goal to read every series that I'm currently reading this year but it's definitely something I need to buckle down this year I think I have something like close to a hundred ongoing series which is ridiculous um so I think I'm really gonna try to buckle down and complete my series this year um meaning 2019 I like try to complete one a week uh which is still only 52 but that will help a lot um just complete as many series as I possibly can and try to do like reading 
um, reading weeks where I just read only, like, sequels and reading weeks where I just read only, like, ends of series and stuff and just try to bump those off because I'm starting to feel really overwhelmed, um, because I keep starting new series, but at the same time, I want to read the books off my Audible, and I want to read books that other people are reading, and so it's, like, this weird balance of, like, well, when is it okay to finally stop say to finally say, like, even though I really want to do this, I'm not going to let myself have this fun and not read this book, but reading is fun, and if I want to read this book, I should be able to, but then it in turn, it's causing me stress, which is making it not fun. It's just, like, kind of a vicious circle. So if I think if I cut that down, and that, I don't have to complete all the series as well. I just want to try all the series that I'm reading again, and then if I don't enjoy them, I have no, com like, compunction, is that the word? Um, I feel no regret for DNFing series if I'm not enjoying them. I just don't know what to DNF, uh, if there is anything I want to DNF, and I don't want to DNF, um, unnecessarily either. I only want to DNF the series and the books that I'm just not enjoying, which makes sense to me, at least. So, anyway, here's been a long, rambly, thought train for me about that, but I really enjoyed looking through that, and it was a nice thing to do while listening to my audiobooks to go through and compile all those stats. So anyway, that's my reading update for the night. I'm gonna go to bed now. I have to get up um, a little early tomorrow because uh, I have a dentist appointment, so hopefully that goes well too. Thursday night, day four of the readathon. Uh, Christopher is out at a movie right now, so I'll be able to read um, pretty consistently over the next couple hours. He's seeing the new Spider Man movie. Yeah, and I definitely didn't feel like going to the movies at all today. I went to the dentist this morning, so I had a little bit of time to listen while I was at the dentist, like actually in the chair. I like to put headphones in and concentrate on a book because it makes everything better. But I didn't want to listen to a romance book while doing that. So I ended up listening to, I've listened to about an hour of um, The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis today. Which is not a romance whatsoever, but it's what I've listened to. And I am now also four hours through North and South, I believe. Yeah, I'm exactly four hours through North and South, and I haven't listened to any more of The Hating Game. So that's basically where I'm at right now. I still only have completed one book, and I don't think I'll finish another one tonight, but hopefully I can get some progress tonight. I wanted to be a lot further in North and South, but maybe that will be my book that continues over into the next readathon, into the um, Christmas at Hogwarts readathon, because the first prompt is to finish your coursework which is to finish your current read so that might continue because I've only been listening to like about an hour a day so far and it's 19 hours long but anyway I'm a little bit further through that I'm a little bit further through uh the hating game by like half an hour and I'm a little bit further through the silver chair and I also read a couple kids books while at work waiting for Christopher tonight as well um by Mo Willems so that's a good thing as well. I've been meaning to read them for a while so I can add those to my Goodreads and I realized there was another book that I never marked off on my Goodreads as well. So there's some updating that I can do that will hopefully bump my red date for the year, red count for the year, up a little bit more. Anyway, let's get to reading. It is now 7.22 by the way. So I have um, quite a few hours tonight. I don't work tomorrow morning. I don't have to go into work until, um, I'm supposed to be there at 3, uh, closer to like 2, 2.50 actually, so that I can get on the register as soon as I get there. So, um, I don't need to leave until around 2.30. So, 
I should have a good amount of time to read in the morning as well, or stay up late tonight reading. Either one works. It's now day five of the readathon. Ooh, I have not made good progress. It's fine, everything's fine. This week ended up being just a lot more everything than I initially thought it would be at the start of the week for some reason. Although I knew it would have I knew it would be the way it was. I just like forgot it. Anyway, <laughs> it's now um ten eighteen AM and I am now, really far through the hating game, I only have 40 minutes left, and, um, yeah, I don't have to go to work, like I said, until, I don't have to leave until, like, 2.30 or so, um, so I have a few hours to kill. I'm currently dyeing my hair, <laughs> uh, when I first put this hair color on, it was literally, like, Pepto-Bismol pink, and now it has, like, calmed down to be more of, like, a dark magenta e color which is still not the color I was going for so I'm really hoping it doesn't look horrendous and that I don't have to dye it again tomorrow or again right now because I don't want to have to dye my hair twice in a row and before I started vlogging or anything I just thought I would hurry up and get this done so that I'd have more time to let the color process and wash it and see how it looks and stuff like that as well I also gave myself like an impromptu haircut yesterday or the day before I was just getting very annoyed with my hair I think it was a couple days ago but it was still curly when I did it it was probably a terrible idea so now that it's straight I'm like seeing all the things that like I don't love and so I've been like recutting recutting so I think it's gonna get to about a point where I like it but honestly I'm just gonna keep my hair curled because I prefer how it looks like that and it's so much easier to style and everything's just better when my hair is curled so anyway um yeah as you can see I did end up reading quite a bit yesterday I just filled in my journal from yesterday and I did end up reading six hours for the smutathon and then one hour of the silver chair so I'm definitely gonna finish the hating game like right now and then after that I think I'm gonna keep listening to north and south a bit and decide what to start next I would love to hit 10 hours today it's definitely not gonna happen last night I barely got as far as I did in the hating game I I did skip a little bit of the hating game because I've read it so much that I figured I would skip the part that makes me frustrated towards the end that I just like don't care about this whole section so I just skipped it but it was actually perfect because literally right when that section started I fell asleep and then I woke up right when that section ended and I was like that was the most perfect timing I didn't even have to skip it I just like slept through it <laughs> woke up and then I like turned my audiobook off and actually went to bed I was like laying on the couch and I just like passed out I was so tired um but I got as far as I wanted so like technically I'm cheating a little bit but it's fine the point is that I'm reading. So those are the plans. Let's see how it goes. And hopefully my hair does not turn out like magenta purple. Ugh. So it's now much later. My hair is um very dark. I didn't intend it for it to be this dark. It was supposed to be like this bright, like a nice like Christmas red and it turned out to be like a dark cherry purple. So that's not what I intended, but I really like how it looks, so it's fine. Um, it's now 9.30. I was supposed to um, <laughs> get home from work around right now, but I actually ended up leaving early. It was just really slow, and the manager was sem sending somebody home, so I ended up going home, which is nice. You know how nice it is to be home, to know that you have two full days ahead of you off, and to not be exhausted. Normally, I'm just so pooped on my day off. And today, I'm not, and I have two more days. Like, it's just so nice to not be, like, so tired. So anyway, so, so, so. Um, I uh, thought I would update you on my reading now. So I did end up finishing The Hating Game. Uh, I don't know. I 
I, this is definitely the time that I've enjoyed it the least. There are, I don't know, I just really love the writing style, but I definitely can see, like, the problematic elements, like, and I could from the beginning. There, it, it def definitely does have some parts where, though, it's just like, ooh, I can see why people might not like this book, but personally, it just works for me. So, I don't know. I just thought it was, like, an interesting thing, but I did really enjoy it. And now I'm currently uh, most of the way through Slammed by Colleen Hoover. This is my first Colleen Hoover, and I um, have two hours and 40 minutes left. I think it's, like, a nine and a half or eight and a half hour audiobook, so I'm pretty far through. And I think I'll be able to finish that up tonight. Uh, this is counting for my uh, forbidden love or forbidden romance um which I didn't know why it was forbidden I um I just seen it on lists of like forbidden romances and then I started it and I was like why is this on this list and then when the thing happened I was like oh okay yeah now that makes sense but I didn't see I don't know I was surprised let's just say so anyway I'm pretty far through I don't know, so far, ooh, I don't know, I, it's not terrible, but it's not great. It's just kind of in between for me. I think that the main character, Lake, is a self-absorbed, insta-lovey brat. But the story's interesting. I don't know, there's just like, it's like there's a part where like in class she's assigned to like write a poem and the only thing that she can think about is this, like, new boy that she met, like, a week before. And she's, like, obsessed with. And so instead of talking, like, maybe writing a poem about her dad who died seven months before and that she's really depressed about, she's like, there's nothing I can write about except for this boy. And I'm like, no, that's so stupid. Like, write about your dad or write about, like, your hometown or write about the state you used to live in. Like, there's so many things you could write about. And she's just, like, so hung up on this guy and it's just like so stupid so insta lovey and she's like I'm falling in love with you and it's like no no you're not you met him two days ago you've been on one date with him you are not falling in love with him honey you are not and so it's like those parts I find really unrealistic but I don't know so far it's like probably like a two star 2.5 star like it hasn't done anything that's like really wowed me plus also I don't know I'm not like a poetry fan it's just never something that I really like clicked with or connected with and so that whole part is like not like I don't know it this book does help me understand why people like it so much like slam poetry and stuff but at the same time it's just like not my thing and it would never be my thing but like I guess I appreciate it more now because of this so that's another good thing anyway I don't know all in all I like it all right. I don't think it's like the worst thing ever, but it also hasn't like done anything for me yet. And I don't feel like it will. It's now the next day, the next morning. It's uh, 10.30, <sighs> so I have most of the day to read. Um, Chris and I are gonna go see a movie together today, um, so it's gonna take like three hours, and then because of all the driving and stuff. I know the movie's not three hours. <laughs> and then I also want to do a live stream today. I need to do a live stream today, so that will probably take an hour or two. So I will be really happy if I get to... Those are my potatoes. They're just boiling over. 
So if I do end up getting to around like 12 hours or so, I'd be pretty gosh darn happy with that. So my goal for today is to read A Cotillion by Georgette Heyer. This is uh, my first book by her. <laughs> I hope I like it. I'm an hour and I started it yesterday and I had a really hard time like concentrating on it because there's just like you get introduced immediately to like half a dozen characters and I was like who are all these people <laughs> but now I like got a reins on who's who's who and what's going on so yeah I'm I'm enjoying it so far I guess I don't know it's it's definitely a lot more like Austin-esque than other like Regencies that I've read. I mean, obviously it's a little bit older. It's like from the 50s, but um, I do think it's interesting that for something so modern as the 50s that she doesn't take the time to explain how stuff works as far as like entailment and only giving stuff to your male heirs and all this stuff like that how like women couldn't get anything I just thought it was interesting that she doesn't explain it like at all she just expects you to know and so when you're thrown in like good thing I knew and that I've read some but if somebody went into these and was not used to how British aristocracy worked in 1800 I feel like it would be really confusing so that's my only like complaint so far uh so yeah so far with my reading let's see what I have done because today is my last day so cotillion will be for my book with a fake relationship um I technically I'm still working on north and south but technically enemies to lovers would count for fight or flight flight or fight one of those two I don't remember which way it goes I think it's fight or flight or for the hating game um I guess friends with benefits would count for fight or flight as well Chris is like side-eyeing me over there <laughs> um slow burn I don't know I don't know if any of these Canada slow burn mm, no not really in my opinion I guess this probably will so we'll see if that counts Forbidden, actually, um, what's that book I just called? Red Slammed? Slammed to totally counts for that. Different Worlds. I mean, North and South would definitely count for that, but I'm, there's no way in Frick that I'm finishing that book today and Cotillion. And I don't know if any of these others count, so maybe I didn't get that one. And One Night Stand would technically count for a Fight or Flight as well. So I've done most of them. I think I'll only have one that I didn't end up getting to. And who knows, maybe this one will count because she's technically not like part of the gentry and all the guys that so basically the plot of cotillion which i didn't know at all if you don't know what it's about it's basically this guy um ended up like adopting this girl that really had like no fortune or anything when she was a kid and now she's like grown and he has gout he knows he's probably gonna die soon and he really likes her and he wants her but he can't like bestow like all his fortunes on her because she's a lady and that's just not acceptable in Regency society and so he has a ton of like great nephews and so he called them all to his house and says like y'all need to offer her for her and whoever she chooses to marry I'll give that person like all my money essentially um and so it's gonna be a fake relationship I think she ends up like <laughs> um like, making a secret arrangement with somebody that they're just, like, going to pretend that they're engaged so that, like, hopefully they can, like, get the money but not actually have to get married. Or maybe they will get married, but just out of convenience. So, one of those two. So, maybe that will count for different worlds. I'm not sure. And technically, the hating game could as well, because I guess she's, like, a country girl. I grew up on a farm, and he's more of, like, a city boy, so I don't know. I can just say that and say that I've like beaten them all if I finish Cotillion today which is all resting on this caveat of if I beat Cotillion today so I've listened to an hour so far today and like I said it's 10 30 so I need to get on it and li listen to a ton of this um so that hopefully I can say that I beat Smutathon
I'm finally not wearing my blue sweater uh, like I have been all the rest of the time. You guys must think that I'm a total slob and never change. But basically, that was just like my lounging around the house sweater slash shirt for the weekend slash week. So basically, whenever I would get home from work, I would instantly change into that and like leggings. And then I would sit down and film. <laughs> and so every time you saw me pretty much wearing exclusively that blue shirt, and this is the exact same shirt, but in gray because they're super comfortable. I got them at Kohl's um, and I really, really like them a lot. So this is my now my shirt for the next probably like six days <laughs> let's be real because every time I don't know I don't like wearing leggings to work especially in the colder weather like it's too cold like they're not the greatest thing to wear because there's like they're not insulated like at all and so being able to like just I just change when I get home and it's like cozy enough for in here because it's a little bit warmer and I don't have to go outside at all anyway it's now a 10 30 p.m sunday night the readathon is practically over. I mean, there's an hour and a half left. And I figured I would update you on my reading. So I realized I never actually talked about my feelings on Slammed, or at least I don't remember talking about my feelings on Slammed, so I'll do it again. Sorry, I had to change the camera. I feel like it was too slanted. Anyway, um, didn't like it. <laughs> I, I didn't super care for it. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but it wasn't great. And I w was surprised at like that first like big plot twist. But besides that, there was nothing about it that I really enjoyed. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people's like favorite part of this book is actually like, um, Lake's, sorry, I need to stop playing with that box. Um, is like Lake's little brother. And I don't know, maybe just based off of like my personal like interactions with children of that age, but he just seemed like mm, immature for his age and oblivious and like super, super naive. And again, maybe I just know kids that are not like that at that age, but it was just like really, really played up and like... I don't know. He just seemed to me that he acted more like he was like six or seven versus nine. And I know they're like, they sound close together, but like the mental like maturity between those ages in my experience are really different. And especially like a kid that has gone through like a trauma, you, you would s expect him to be a little bit more mature. Um, I guess it could have always gone the other way as well, where he could have, like, regressed a bit and, like, closed and cocooned himself off, but I don't know. It just felt, like, out of place, and so I feel like a lot of people really love that aspect, and I just thought it was, like, very played up. As far as the relationship went and Lake, Lake is so annoying. She's such a selfish, petty character, um, only thinks about herself, never really thinks about anyone else honestly and is a brat and is very full of herself and I don't know and I feel like the writing was also really lazy in like character development we get told stuff a lot and also like when Lake goes to school and it's her first day of school and a girl like turns to her and is like let me look at your like sheet to see like what classes we have the same your schedule and she looks at them and she's like okay you need to change this to this and this to this so that we're in these things the same as well she's like and then we can be great friends and literally like two days later the other girl is like we're best friends and lake's just like yeah we are and i'm like you're not best friends you met two days ago i don't think that's true and it was just like very i don't know I don't know. I just really didn't enjoy it at all, but it didn't make me want to like claw my eyes out or my ears out, I guess. So there's that. I'd probably give it like one and a half stars, but it wasn't good and I don't recommend. That's basically my feelings on Slammed. Like, mm, I don't know, but it was actually better than I thought it would be. Um, <laughs> I expected it to be a lot more flaming garbage. I'm so sorry for the fridge. I just, I don't know. I need to like get this filmed so I can like clean stuff up and 
go to bed because it's getting kind of late and I do have work in the morning. So I'm just going to push through whenever the fridge makes those noises. All right. And the other thing that I was reading was Cotillion by Georgia Hare. Hare? Ugh. Um, which is my first Georgia Hare. And I told you this morning a, a little bit like what I thought the summary was going to be. Wow. This book is a wild ride. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I very rarely in the hundreds of books that I've read in the past couple years, um, hundreds of books that I've read this year, heck, like I've read uh, over 300 books this year, around like 250, not including like DNFs and picture books. Um, very rarely am I like genuinely like surprised in things in books. Um, sometimes I don't see things coming, but I'm not sh shocked by them at all. I'm just like, oh yeah, like I didn't think about that possibility, but like I'm not surprised by it either. Um, I was genuinely surprised by everything in this book. Everything. There was like at least a dozen times where something would happen and I was just like, <gasps> I did not expect that. And it was just so enjoyable. I definitely had a hard time getting into it for like the first like um probably like half an hour of the book. I was just like what is happening? But then once I got into it, I just inhaled it and it was great. Um like I said, I went to the movies with Chris today and we like took some time to do some other things and we ate lunch together and stuff. But if I didn't have to do those things and if I didn't like stop, which I'm like, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I spent time with Chris like on our days off together. But if I hadn't done those things, I definitely would have just like read it straight through and I listened to it as much as I could. Often when listening to a book, I'll like take breaks and I'll watch like 15 minutes of YouTube videos or I'll listen to like half an hour of another book and I'll switch around. This book, I like the second I started it pretty much, the second I got invested in it about half an hour through, I like didn't touch anything else until I like, finished it. I finished it probably like 15 minutes ago and then I immediately sent all my thoughts and feelings on it um, to Kara because Kara is the one that actually told me to read this book uh, because it's her favorite Georgette Hare and she... I was talking about how I'd never read one of her books and how I wanted to read one this year and she said that this is the one that she is her favorite and she recommends. So I'm like, okay, I'll read this one, sure. And, and now like 11 months later, I finally read it and I, I did. I really liked it. I really loved the characters. I really <laughs> loved all the plot twists and everything. I was like explaining how I felt while reading it to Christopher and he was like, it literally sounds like a murder mystery but like romance and I'm like that's actually a pretty accurate description in my opinion and I don't know if other people like saw everything coming but I didn't and even in like the last like hour of the audiobook like literally less than the last 10 percent of the book I was like okay I'm pretty sure how this is gonna end and then she threw in like three more things and I was like what just happened like oh my goodness I was not expecting that I don't know it was just so enjoyable the characters were great Freddie is like a new favorite character of mine. He is such a doll. I adore him. I really liked Meg. I don't know. I just really, really enjoyed this like cast of characters. I also really enjoyed that there were no real like villains. There was only like one character that I would actually say is like truly like not a good person. And there's like other characters that are like not great people, but they're not like evil either or inherently bad like they're not the nicest person they don't always do the nicest things they may be very selfish or self-centered but they're not like evil and there was like only one character that I would say is like pretty like messed up and besides that it was just like nice being able to like see characters that weren't necessarily black or white and I don't know there's just this whole cast of characters was just like such a wild ride to read about and was so enjoyable I haven't like fully decided on a rating for it yet. I don't know. I It's at a 4.5 I would say. Like I really really liked it a lot but I don't know which way it's gonna lean. I might just like give it five and then if I like feel like that's too strong I may like bump it down to a four but it's like a 4.5. Like it's a very very good book. I really really liked it and it 
feels like super rereadable as well because <laughs> this first time I was just trying to like grasp all the straws and figure out what was going on and all this stuff was being like thrown at you all the time like there was like never I felt like a lull in the story as well like there was constantly stuff happening all the time and so I feel like on a reread I'd be able to like <laughs> mellow out a little bit more and just like pay attention to all like the nuances and stuff but uh yeah Georgia hair I don't know <laughs> I just I need to look up how to pronounce her name she's a tricky writer at least from this book there were so many things there were so many like false clues and all the stuff that she put in there to like trip you up so you that you wouldn't see what was coming and stuff and she's just such a such a tricky writer and I really enjoyed the experience I don't know it was just so good and again like so compelling like very rarely do I read a book and like feel like I can't put it down like I do not want to stop listening to it at all even for a second especially like I feel like when I get towards the ends of books especially as well like in the last like hour or two I'll like take a break and I'll be like okay I've had enough of this I need to go watch YouTube for an hour and like veg out and this one I was like there was not a chance I was putting it down for a second longer than I needed to because it was just so enjoyable and compelling and great I feel like I'm just repeating myself at this point but if you um if you want to read it I really suggest you do if it sounds interesting at all I really liked it and I don't know it's just it's also nice to read I've been wanting to read, and if you have recommendations for this, please let me know, but I've been wanting to read more books that are more like Jane Austen's books. Like, this one was definitely, like, grittier, and they talked about things that you definitely wouldn't hear as often in Jane Austen's works and stuff. <clears throat> but, but overall, it was more of that, like, Austen-esque feel, and it's nice to not have, like, every character be like a duke or a duchess or whatever like super high up in gentry or whatever there was one guy that was an earl and it was such a huge deal he's like I'm an earl I'm an earl I'm an earl and he gave him such himself such airs about being an earl which is even like I don't even think is that high up on the um like the totem pole for <laughs> for the aristocracy so I don't know it was just like it's nice and refreshing not to read just about like dukes and duchesses all the time and to read about like people that are just like decently well off but not like super titled. So if you have more recommendations besides Georgia, I would appreciate that but I definitely will be reading um all of her books at some point and <laughs> I've heard yeah uh, going off of Kara she said that this is her favorite but I will definitely be seeing what her next highest rated book is maybe and then give that one a shot soon like I really want to pick something up soon and it also helps that they're all I'm pretty sure they're all standalones um which is nice as well I appreciate a good standalone I guess that's it for Smutathon so overall I guess I ended up finishing four books and I got about a third of the way through North and South not as far as I would have liked but again the week ended up just taking up more of my time than I initially thought it would. But I'm pretty pleased with how my reading went. I don't know. I really enjoyed rereading The Hating Game. It was probably my least favorite time reading it, but I still did really like it. I loved reading Cotillion. I liked Fight or Flight. Um, the ending kind of threw it off a bit for me, and I didn't like Slammed, but it didn't make me like angry. So, I don't know. Overall, a pretty decent reading week, and I really enjoyed what I was reading of North and South as well, and will definitely be continuing on with my reread of that. Thanks so much for joining me for Smutathon. I know it was a long vlog, but, um, it was fun, and vlogging while reading honestly just makes the experience so much better as well. Like, when I, I realize, like, if I'm not vlogging while I'm reading, it just, like, it's not as good and it makes me like remember and treasure the books more if I'm like stopping to give updates and I know I didn't do a super great job with it this time but like hopefully as I continue vlogging and get back into the swing of it it'll be better so anyway thanks so much for watching I super duper appreciate it and I'll see you all in my next live stream or vlog or whatever I decide to do but 
hopefully more vlogs soon more reading vlogs obviously and you can always also catch me over on Rhodes vlog where we've been posting a lot of vlogs recently as well just love daily life so again thanks so much and i'll see you soon bye everyone